Hello students, welcome to Be Biological. I am your instructor Aditi and today we will discuss about the structure of chromosome. E. Starsberger in 1875 first discovered thread-like structures which appeared during cell division. These thread-like structures were called chromosomes due to their affinity for basic dyes. The term chromosomes is derived from two Greek words, chrome means color and soma means body. The term was first used by Waldeer in 1888. Chromosomes contributed to the division of cells and they are of prime importance as they carry the genes which are the hereditary material. The chromosome morphology changes during cell division and mitotic metaphase is the most suitable stage for studies on chromosome morphology. Chromatid, centromere, telomere, secondary constriction, chromomere, chromonema, matrix, these are the following structural features can be seen under the light microscope in mitotic metaphase chromosome. Each metaphase chromosome appears to be longitudinally divided into two identical parts, each of which is called chromatid. Chromatids of a chromosome appear to be joined together at a point known as centromere. Two chromatids making up a chromosome are referred to as sister chromatids. The chromatids of homologous chromosomes are known as non-sister chromatids. The region where two sister chromatids appear to be joined during mitotic metaphase is known as centromere. It generally appears as constriction and hence called primary constriction. Helps in the movement of the chromosomes to opposite poles during anaphase of cell division. The centromere consists of two disc-shaped bodies which are called kinetochores. Normally, chromosomes are monocentric, having one centromere each. Depending on position of the centromere, chromosomes can be grouped as metacentric, where centromere is located exactly at the center of chromosome. Such chromosomes assume V-shaped at anaphase. Next one is submetacentric where the centromere is located on one side of the center point such that one arm is longer than the other, these chromosomes become J or L-shaped at anaphase. Next one is acrocentric where centromere is located close to one end of the chromosome thus giving a very short arm and a very long arm. These chromosomes acquire J-shaped or rod-shaped during anaphase. And the next and the last one is telocentric where centromere is located at one end of the chromosome so that the chromosome has only one arm. These chromosomes are I-shaped or rod-shaped. The two ends of chromosomes are known as telomeres. They are highly stable and do not fuse or unite with telomeres of other chromosomes due to polarity effect. Any broken end of a chromosome is unstable and can join with a piece of any other chromosome, but the telomeres impart stability to the chromosome which retains its identity and individuality through cell cycle and for many cell generation. Now what is secondary constriction? The constricted or narrow region other than that of centromere is called secondary constriction. The chromosomes having secondary constrictions are known as satellite chromosomes or sat chromosomes. Chromosomes may possess secondary constriction in one or both arms of it. Chromosomal end distal to the secondary constriction is known as satellite. 
production of nucleolus is associated with secondary constriction and therefore it is also called nucleolus organizer region or nuclear organizing region or NOR. In some species like maize, rye, etc., chromosomes in pachytin stage of meiosis show small bead-like structures called chromomeres. The distribution of chromomeres in chromosome is highly characteristic and constant. The pattern of distribution being different for different chromosomes. They are clearly visible as dark staining bands in the giant salivary gland chromosomes. Chromomeres are regions of tightly folded DNA. A chromosome consists of two chromatids and each chromatid consists of thread-like coil structures called chromonema or in plural chromonemata. The term chromonema was coined by Vesdovsky in 1912. The chromonemata form the gene-bearing portion of chromosomes. The mass of achromatic material which surrounds the chromonemata is called matrix. The matrix is enclosed in a sheath which is known as pellicle. Both matrix and pellicle are non-genetic materials and appear only at metaphase when the nucleolus disappears. The material of which chromosomes are composed is called chromatin. Chromatin was classified into two groups by cytologists on the basis of its affinity to basic dyes like acetocarmine or fulgen. The darkly stained regions were called heterochromatin while lightly stained regions were called euchromatin. This differential staining capacity of different parts of chromosomes is known as heteropycnosis. Heterochromatin is further classified into two groups. Constitutive, which is present in all cells at identical position on both homologous chromosomes of pair. And next is facultative. It varies in state in different type of cells at different stages or sometimes from one homologous chromosome to another. Now what are karyotype and ideogram? Karyotype is represented by arranging the chromosomes in descending order of size keeping their centromeres in the same line. The karyotype of a species can be represented diagrammatically showing all the morphological features of chromosomes and such diagram is known as ideogram or idiotype. Chemically, chromosomes are nucleoprotein in nature means are composed of RNA, DNA and protein. Generally, chromosomes contains 30 to 40 percent DNA, 50 to 65 percent of protein and 0.5 to 10 percent of RNA. Let's see the packaging of chromosome in brief. It starts with linear DNA which then folds with histone protein to form nucleosome then they folds further to form nucleoprotein fibers or solenoid. Then they form extended chromosome fibers which further condense to form chromosome scaffold and then they again condense to form the chromosome. This is all about the basic structure of chromosome. Hope this video helped you. If you like the video then please Consider subscribing to my channel and please share the video to your friends. Thank you so much for listening to me.